Hello and welcome to the first of the tutorials. I'm really excited to be here and I'm even more thrilled that you all got on board with this and wanted uh, to learn some, maybe something new. Um, you know, some of it won't be new to you and that's fine, you can go make yourself a cup of tea. Um, but occasionally there will just be something you think, oh, I haven't done it like that, I might have a go. Um, so it's, it sort of came home to me when I was uh, teaching uh, and, you know, a lot of the ladies there had been making curtains for a while that I don't think about explaining sort of sometimes what I think of the basics that things um, and the way I do them because I just assume that everybody did them the same but of course no one does everything exactly the same you find your own way through and uh, you know you'll have your favorite methods and if you try some of mine and they don't work for you you'll go back to the, what you were doing before and that's absolutely fine uh, there's no right or wrong way to do stuff it's just trying to find maybe a better way through um, and maybe save yourself a little bit of time but keep your, the accuracy up. So um, I'm going to start with interlinings, with joining interlinings and um, at this point I probably can hear the groan but um, I've had a couple of members that have I've been speaking to and they still we didn't realise that you could join your interlinings like this. So, you know, I can't assume that everybody knows this method. So I'm going to I'm going to start with that. Um, and a lot of the stuff, a lot of the tutorials that I will be doing later on um, will be a lot more complicated. But, um, you know, I'm not assuming anything, that's what I'm trying to say. There's lots of different ways of doing everything. So um, interlining, a lot of people struggle with it because you'll have one piece that will grow more than another. And people say, you know, why have I got 10 centimeters left? I cut them accurately. And you know, when I lay them on the fabric, uh, one side is really lumpy and the other side is fine and sometimes I can get away with it and sometimes I can't and you know on a thicker fabric you can certainly it's a lot more forgiving than something like a silk which is like paper and you need to be you don't want lumps and bumps under your silk fabric because you will struggle to get those curtains to sit properly so um, most people will roll their, roll their in, interlining up. I'm saying most, I don't know really whether most will or, or not, but anyway, um, will roll their interlining up and have just one side that's flat and open. And then you put one side on, this is how I was taught years ago, one side on top of the other. So you're not actually making it like a, like a curtain with a proper seam one side on top of the other and then you either zigzag or you straight stitch now over time you can get the tension fairly spot on depending on your machine by you know manipulating it pulling it all the rest of it um, there's a there's a different way of doing it where you can get it right the whole time it's super quick no pinning involved um, and literally you don't have to go through all this business of rolling up so it'll go under the machine um, you can literally put one on top of the other and it's using an overlocker um, another member um, got in touch with me to say she just bought an overlocker and she wasn't really sure what to use it for um, I was saying interlining uh, definitely interlining I'm lucky I've got two um, I've got this poor old brother that's been with me for years and years and years and there is a health warning on this when I start to use this either stick your fingers in your ears or turn the sound down because I can't get it any better than this and nor can my service man <laughs> and it's very noisy um, so I use it just for the interlinings then I've got my mum's old dukey which is great and that does cushions and um, velvets and things that you need to overlock don't use it that much actually um so using the using a, an overlocker what you want to do is you want to have a flat lock seam that's what it's called a flat lock seam uh your instructions will have it in somebody told me today that not all overlockers have the available have the ability to do a flat lock seam 
I'm not sure about that, uh, but you'd need to double check that, obviously. Um, this is my old brother, like an old family friend. You have only three threads when you're, when you're doing a flat lock. So you remove one of your straight stitches, one of your, you know, uh, just ordinary stitches that, that go into your needle. And you have the other one on zero. And then you have the other two, so your upper and your lower uh, threader, on about seven or eight. Um, there is something that they want me to do on the on 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 the diff on this one. I don't know whether it makes any difference or not, to be honest, because I haven't actually tried it with it on and off. But I I followed the instructions and I've just turned that that dial. Um, lots of YouTube videos out there for each machine probably. Uh, so I'm hoping that you can set yours up like this. Once you've done it, what happens is that the actual threads are very really loose. So um, they don't feel loose when you've actually done it, but you can actually pull it apart. And it's a bit like um, like a sort of scarring. It, it's, it, it's like a what they used to call a Frankenstein stitch, where it just opens up. And so one side will just lay flat on the other. And it's really nice and easy. And I use the, the really flat side against the main fabric and the one with a little bit of a ridge where I'm gonna put the lining on because it's going towards the back of the curtain, it doesn't matter. Um, and then if there's any any lumps or bumps, it's not gonna come through on the, on the main fabric. So I will, I'll show you what, what basically what you do, and I'm gonna just undo this now because I rolled it up just to show you that first bit, is you, you put one on top of the other, really, just like you're joining a, you know, two linings. So I'm just going to do that. There we go, one on top of the other. Just get those those seams together. And this is where it does come with a health warning. <laughs> so <laughs> please turn your sound down now. So I'm going to pop it underneath let's just move it down so you can see what I'm doing literally just put it on and you have your I keep my teeth you know the actual cutter on and um, and you can take off a little smidge of that of that uh, salvage that really doesn't matter at all this isn't quite long enough I just need to move it forward a bit so I can get to the pedal let's just move that like that okay I think I can reach that now Okay, so there we go. So you don't have to pull it or push it. You just have to lay one on top of the other and go. I'm going to do the whole length and then you can see how Sorry, I told you it was not. Just talk amongst yourselves at this point. quite a long full, full length <laughs> piece that I've got here. Okie dokie. There we go. Right. Chuck those little bits away. Move that out of the way. So this is what you have. This is what you end up with, which I don't know whether you can see it actually, but it looks like you've got you know like a proper ridge but when you come to just ease it open it flattens out really nicely so that ends up by being quite flat it looks like there's a ridge but it's such a small little ridge that it really doesn't matter and once once you 
you've just you don't even have to do this really I'm only doing it so that you can see but I don't know if you can see that a little bit better but on the back it opens out so you've got the stitching just a little bit wider but obviously you've got no no hole you know I mean don't don't worry you, you're not going to get a hole it's absolutely dead tight and then that's the other side which actually is really flat it just it has got like a little bit of a ridge but as I say I put that towards the lining and this bit this lovely flat piece stays on the curtain but when you When you put it out, and I'm going to just move the camera in a minute so you can see, it's so lovely and flat. There is no puckering. It is just so nice and smooth. I don't know if you can see that, but there's absolutely no ridges or or lumps and bumps it really is lovely and flat here and then you just keep doing that with all of the different layers and um, done there's as I say no pinning no folding no looking at it afterwards and thinking oh god I've got to unpick that or cut it off and re redo it so hopefully if you haven't done this before you'll have a go at it and see how how great it is and um, I'll speak to you next time. Take care. Bye.